Was acting like a tool. Come on, sit down. Walk, walk into my office here. I want to ask you something. Uh, what's ever cooking up in that devious mind of yours? I want no part of it. I got a favor to ask you. Personal favor. Uh, see you later. No, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Sit, down, sit down, sit down. Seriously, it's not for me. It's for Dixie. <laughs> I should have guessed. She's been having a hard time since the baby was born. Well, haven't we all? I mean, she's depressed and she's uncertain and, and, and she needs a friend to court. So? So, what I was thinking is maybe, you know, you could, uh... Well, I, I know it's a lot to ask, but, uh... Could you make up with your father and, like, move back into the homestead? That way you could keep an eye on each other. See, last night I was sure as anything that Adam Jr. had been taken. I really carried on something awful. But then when Adam and I went upstairs, look at his crib. He was there. He was fine, safe and sound. And then this morning, um... I'm right here with you, darling. Tell Dr. Fowler what happened this morning. Um, Adam found Adam Jr. in his tub by himself. I guess, I guess I put him in there, but the thing is, is I don't remember I putting him in his tub or filling up the bath or anything. You gotta help me. You gotta tell me what's the matter because I don't want to hurt my son. I would rather die first. Well, you're overstressed from the kidnapping, and, uh, you don't have to pussyfoot around with us, Doctor. Yeah, just tell me. Just tell me straight out. Well, the, the episodes that you're describing could indicate many things. If it's serious, say so. Mrs. Chandler, uh, your symptoms could be potentially dangerous. Are you saying that maybe sometime down the line I might hurt my own little boy? Or even herself? Uh, yes, I'm afraid that is what I'm saying. God. Well, that's a hell of an answer. Well, the problem is that your wife has been suffering with this condition longer than most women do. Please tell me how I can get myself out of this as fast as possible. Well, that might be a slower process than you'd like. I, I recommend that you start by finding a good therapist. I could refer you to several people. No, thank you. I don't think a therapist is good. It just takes too long. Um, isn't there something maybe I could take, maybe, or do right now? There's several excellent antidepressant drugs, but the problem is that uh, we found that medication is of limited value without the therapy. I don't hold much stock with psychiatry, Peter. Well, you asked for my recommended treatment. That's the best available. Well, what about my minister? I mean, I could talk to my minister. I mean, he's always been a comfort to me. Pastoral counseling would be a start. And, and I, I could get a nanny. I mean, Adam always thought a nanny would be a good idea. Darling, you said you didn't want any help. Well, you know, I mean, a nanny could, you know, look out for me and the baby at the same time until I got better. That's an excellent idea. I am not going to let this thing get me. I mean, I have my family. I, I'm going to fight until it's gone. Sweetheart, that's the spirit, and I will help you in every way I can. Oh, you're sweet. I am so lucky to have such a wonderful husband. I hope you'll feel free to call me if you have any more questions, Mrs. Chandler. Thank you. And thank you for coming all the way down here. I mean, I know with doctors, all your time, it's very valuable. Thank you. Yeah, I'll walk you out, Peter. Your wife doesn't seem nearly as depressed as you described. Uh, I really think that... I uh, can't thank you enough for what you've done. And uh, perhaps that uh, the new uh, research grant that I arranged will help you in your work. You're a fine scientist, Peter. A good man and a good friend. Thank you. I hope you're not going to let that depress you, darling, or upset you. I don't know, Adam. I'm sort of thinking about, um, 
Well, maybe a psychiatrist is a good oh, idea. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Postpartum depression is a temporary thing. It's certainly going to go away before you need any mumbo-jumbo from a quack like Dr. Gould. I, I personally think that your idea about a nanny, it makes much more sense. Chandler residence. This is Brooke English's secretary. I'd like to speak with Adam Chandler, please. Yes, this is he. He wanted me to tell you when Ms. English arrived. She's in the office now and in a meeting. Thank you very much. I'll be there immediately. Goodbye. <laughs> Darling, I'm afraid I have to go back to the office. Uh, I hate to leave you. It's okay. I mean, I... Good, good. I'll be back as soon as I can. In the meantime, I want you to put all thoughts of psychiatrists out of that pretty little mind of yours. No, God never made a more sensible woman than you. I'm sorry, but Adam, I think... Well, sometimes I wonder if psychiatrists know what they're doing in the first place. Look what happened to Skye. Months she spent in therapy with Gould at Oakhaven. Didn't do her much good, did it? I'll be back soon. But my father and Dixie are man and wife, and I think that this is their problem you should butt out. Can't. What is the attraction? You knock heads with my father, you, you're beaten up and hospitalized for her, you risk being thrown in jail to save her baby. What is her fatal charm, Tad? I can't resist the challenge. Oh. She, she's got no money. She, she's... She's uneducated. Her social skills consist of making baking biscuits and listening to country music and cooing over the newest addition to the Chandler family. We're getting a little jealous, aren't we? Jealous? I am not jealous of Dixie. Dixie is a throwback to the women's movement and everything it's trying to accomplish for the past year. So move in and help set her free. No. No, I can't do that. I'm up to here trying to get my own liberation. Just think about it. No. No, I have all my own plans for my life. Don't be so selfish. <laughs> Sorry, Tad. It runs in the family. Now I've got to go. Come on, honey. Listen, listen. I wouldn't ask you after everything you've been through unless I was desperate. I'm begging you, please. Dixie will be fine. She's got you. That's... That's more than most women dare to dream about. What's that, some kind of backhanded compliment? Yes. But it's also a warning. Get over this obsession with my father's wife. You can't win. She loves him. She loves him for better, or more likely for worse. Goodbye, Ted. Bye, honey. Nico! Give me the damn phone! I'm sorry. I wish the baby was awake. I would have loved for you to meet him. It's not necessary. Oh, yeah, I guess he would be coming in the way we are in the... Um, sit down, please. Tell me, Mrs. Chandler, does the child nap regularly at this time? Um, no, no. Sometimes he goes down after lunch, but um, it really varies from day to day. Well, I can have him on a strict schedule before you know it. Oh, these are some of my references. Keep them to read at your leisure. Thank you very much. The agency really didn't tell me that much. Um, excuse me, Donald is out, so I'm gonna have to get that myself. Excuse me. Ted. Good afternoon, madam. Is your husband at home? No, no. Excellent. Adam's That's Mambo. Ted. What's with the librarian? I am interviewing a baby nanny. She looks full grown to me. Why? You hate the idea of a nanny. Well, maybe I don't anymore. Okay, can you visit some other time? No, 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 honey. You need me right now. Because believe it or not, private investigators are excellent judges of character. No. No, 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 no. no. Listen, listen, listen. I've got a built-in lie detector, and I've got the baby's best interest at heart. Please. All right. Okay. Just for a little while, okay? Only because she scares me a little bit. This is Tarquin. Hi, I would like you to meet a friend of mine. This is um, Ted Martin. Ted Martin, this is Mrs. Tarquin. Delighted. How do you do? Yeesh. Do you mind if I join in? Um, I hope you don't mind. Ted, I think, probably cares about the baby just as much as I do. I, I hope you don't mind. Okay, great. Well, um, there were some more questions I had for you. Feedings. I wanted to ask you about feedings. Sometimes the baby wakes up in the middle of the night, you know, crying for his bottle. A few nights of just letting him cry will break him of that. Uh, well, uh, excuse me. Uh, did you use the words 
break him? Break? Yes. Demand feeding is not desirable, Mr. Martin. A baby needs to adjust to the adult schedule, not the other way around. Oh, well, you kind of might have a hard time with my husband, see, because one peep out of that baby and he's up there picking him up and rocking him. That is naughty of Daddy. But I can break him of these bad habits. How about potty training? The baby, not Daddy. Ted. Sorry. The sooner the better. Start early and firmly. One of the problems with our society is children who have no self-discipline. And I suppose thumb-sucking is right out. Absolutely. You're a real Mary Poppins, aren't you? I beg your pardon? Ted, um, Mrs. Tarquin, I, I want to thank you so much for coming by. And I've got your references. I will give them a good read-over, okay? Thank you. Very well. Uh, the door. I'll show you the door. Thank you. Bye-bye. How interesting. A Nazi with a bra. Thank you so much, Mr. Martin. I needed her. You do not need her. She's a walking nightmare. Her underwear clanks when she walks. She probably buys her lingerie from a spot welder. Well, I cannot raise this baby by myself. Yes, not right you now. And you're a wonderful mother. You're a loving mother. You're, you're everything a baby needs. I, believe me, my mother knows, and she, and she told me so. Besides, the whole nanny thing, that was Adam's idea, right? Okay, so you're a little depressed, you're, you're a little nervous, you forgot a few things. It's no big deal. Yes, it is a big deal, okay? Because I am sick. I cannot trust myself. You are not sick, and you can trust yourself absolutely. And I can prove it. Yeah. I, I've got a surefire test to prove that you, you're playing with a full deck and your elevator goes all the way to the top. And if you pass, you have to agree to forget about all this unstable stuff, okay? Will you do it? I mean, I'll try anything. You'll please to notice that on this tray there are ten valid and distinctive items. Yeah, oops, there was one. <laughs> we have the button, we have the snapshot, the pacifier, the paper clip, the postcard, the hairbrush, the spoon, the keys, the pen, and my favorite, the screw. Okay? Now, I want you to study this very carefully and commit this to memory, okay? You got it? Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. that, that's enough. Close your eyes. Ted. Close your eyes now. Please. Okay, now. What are you doing? Never mind. Please to open your baby blues. Now, I want you to tell me how many objects are missing from this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 you have 10 the, seconds. This, uh, the pen's gone. Starting now. And, um... Dun, dun, the bu dun. The button. Dun, dun, dun. She's doing very well, folks. Dun, dun, the dun. The screw! This is the Just screw's a not screw! Gone. My favorite! It's missing! Uh -huh. Yeah! Mm -hmm. You see, you passed this part of the test. You're doing, you're doing very, very well. You have excellent recall, and you have amazing visual perception. Okay, now, you can keep the canned poodle meat that you've already won, or you can go uh -huh. for door number two by telling me what is the third verse of the national anthem, otherwise known as... The Star Spangled Banner. The third verse? Yeah. Okay, it's big at ball games. Da, 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 I'm confused. <laughs> and where's that one. band Everybody. who so vauntingly swore amid the havoc of war and the battle of confusion? That's amazing. See, that's amazing, because to me it was a trick question. I didn't know there was a third verse of the Star Spangled Banner. So you're probably right, because there's nobody else in the country that could contest you on it. So, uh, what's, what's my phone number? Phone number, um... Quick, yeah, don't think about it that hard. Come on. 555 five, Very, very good. What did you have for breakfast yesterday? Yesterday I had breakfast, um... <laughs> I had uh, cold Chinese food and chocolate milk. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> really? Yeah. I may throw up. Does the whole house eat like that? No, no, just me. I had a sneak away. Mrs. Schindler wasn't looking. I'll bet. <laughs> How cute. Well, you passed the test. I did? Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Chandler, congratulations. You are 100% okay. You're peachy keen. Mm. Your memory is completely fine. Absolutely in place. You're playing with everything. All the cookies are there, you know? You believe it? Yeah, completely. Listen, listen, listen. I mean, if you're a little depressed and, and, and upset, maybe it's because you don't have enough fun in your life. Oh. But you're all together up here. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. You know what that means? That means I don't have to get a nanny. Oh, I hope Adam will like that. Go for it, Bob. Oh, that's great. We're not set up for tonight. Oh, Fantastic. Come on, Nico. Give it a rest. You got hours yet. In any case, I want to talk to you. 
than that. For once and for all, would you tell me what the hell it is that's bothering you? Life, man. Isn't that enough? Life? Yeah, life. Well, I feel sorry for you, babe. Yeah, you got the hottest club in town. You got mm -hmm. one of the hottest babes in town as your ball and chain. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I haven't got an office. I'm living at home with my mother, and the woman I'm in love with is married to another guy. Don't, me, don't expect me to feel sympathy for your complaints. Yeah, you got a lot of troubles, don't you? You want to hear my troubles? Sure. I might go to prison for fraud, man. <laughs> fraud? Yeah, it's funny. Isn't that funny? Fraud. Okay, Nico, I'll bite. What did you do? Well, maybe you don't want to tell no, me. No, that's fine. So I mean, serious. once it hits no, no, the no, papers, no. You, everybody's going to know anyway, so you might as well be the first in the block. I married Cecily for a trust fund. Uh, I lied all the way to the bank. You stink. How the hell could you do that to somebody's life? Get yourself a job. No, 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 wait a minute. Don't no, walk what? away from me. Just enough with the attitude, because if what you're telling me is true, then compared to you, Adam Chandler is a prince among men. You better watch. No, 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 no I'm what serious. about Cecily? No. Uh, no, Cecily, what about Cecily? How could you do that to somebody as nice as her? I should Chandler know. is a prince among men. You better watch. No, 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 no what about Cecily? No. Uh, no, Cecily, what about Cecily? How could you do that to somebody as nice as her, huh? Well, from what I hear, you've done a lot worse than married somebody just for money. What is that supposed to mean? Didn't you sleep with somebody's mother and her daughter? No, 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 wait. <laughs> Yo, whoa, whoa, what? wait a minute. I told you that in strictest confidence, okay? That has nothing to do with the situation. And you were also paid to go out with somebody's daughter. That's no, low, no, 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 no. Now you're being deluded. You're being really deluded here, okay? That has nothing to do with marriages. There were, there were, uh, uh, extenuating circumstances. Well, those extenuating circumstances apply here, too. So back off before you I get hurt. I can't back off. I was your best man. You realize that spiritually that makes me an accessory to fraud? Well, you better shut up before you wind up in prison with me, cupcakes. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm not wearing I don't a house for no. you or anybody I'll else. Don't walk away from me. Let me shut up. I want to use the phone anyway. Give me the... You know, you are such a devious son of a... Well, well, I don't understand why you're so angry. I just wanted to be near you. I just wanted things to be the way they used to be. Is that so hard to understand?